everyone and welcome to another episode of Surprise Guest with PR Kanghel. Salamat muli sa pag-download, pag-stream at sa pakikinig sa aming surprise episodes where this is the podcast where every episode feels like it's your birthday sa dami ng mga surpresa. So if it's your actual birthday, happy birthday! <laughs> Alamin na natin kung sino ang ating surprise guest for today dahil makakatanggap ako ng mga clues from our team. Okay, first clue. I used to have a show in GMA. Okay, what year kaya, no? Next, I am also a bemedaled athlete. Okay, ooh, interesting. And then our last clue, I can live, I can love, I can make horses jump! Oh my gosh, surprise guest, are you Miss Mikey Kowako Jaworski? Hi, yes! Hi! <laughs> Hi, okay, Mikey, how are you? Hello. Oh, ma- the best is I can live, I can love, and I can make horses job. <laughs> I was Ikaw like, I'm not going to be here. the first two clues could have been any. I mean, mas yes. maraming options. Yeah. <laughs> Dami <talaga>. Dami. Naku, <laughs> it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm very good, and it's good to see you also. Thank you so much for saying yes and agreeing to be a part of our podcast. You know, we've been wanting and trying for a long time to get you on the show. I mean, of really? course, it's supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> Price for me, but ever since the beginning, I said, "Can we put Miss Mikey Kowanko on our list?" <laughs> oh, <yay. laughs> so, first of all, how are you? You look great. I mean, you look the same way you did when you still had your show in GMA. <laughs> Para wala nang bago. <laughs> Kanina nga may nag-send sa akin ng picture nung era na yon, and I was like. Oh, parang nag-iba lang yung hairstyle ko. Minsan may bangs, minsan wala. Babalik yung bangs, matawala siya. <laughs> minsan mataas, yeah. minsan mababa. <laughs> minsan nakataas, naka-hairspray, minsan wala. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, obviously a lot has happened since those days. And I seem to find ways to keep myself busy. Or other people find ways to keep me busy. <laughs> they want to make sure that you're still very much active in either the sports <laughs> scene or showbiz, right? <laughs> Parang not so much a showbiz. Pero sa sports scene, most definitely. Most definitely. Can you tell us about the work that you're doing now for sports? I mean, are you still with uh, IOC? Yes, yeah, yes. But siguro I should give a description of what the IOC is and what we do. So I'm going to simplify it medyo mas layman term. So the IOC is the owner of the Olympic Games and it's our responsibility to make sure that it gets delivered. We have winter games and summer games and now we have youth winter and youth summer Olympic games also. Mga every two years, may Olympic games. The IOC is also basically in charge of global sporting policy when it comes to countries that are represented in the Olympic movement. So that's why merong mga national Olympic committees because these are recognized by the IOC. So pwede kang magpadala ng athletes to international competitions because the IOC recognizes international federations for specific sports tapos mga national Olympic committees. So that's what the IOC does. But the IOC is a private non-stock non-profit corporation. So to be on the board basically means na There's an administrative side to the IOC. Of course, well, it's really a corporation, di ba? And of course, the policy side of sports. Pero kami yung nagde-decide yung board ng lahat ng policy. It still has to be approved by the larger body of mm-hmm. IOC members, of which there are about 100 from all over the world. I'm with the POC only because my position as an IOC member actually makes me de facto member of the executive board of the POC. Parang kailan lang, no? Pero I was elected into the IOC around November of 2013. Tapos ko, grabe, ang tagal na pala. And now I'm on the executive board of the IOC. I was elected in 2020. And I'm very proud because I'm the first Asian woman to be elected onto the board of the IOC. So wow, parang congratulations. Sa akin, super exciting yon. Hindi naman ako yung talagang parang nagbubuhat ng sarili kong bangko. Kaya lang super exciting para sa akin yun, yung part na yon. But of course, being the only IOC member from the Philippines, I am the IOC representative to the Philippines. Kasi maraming nag-aakala that I represent the Philippines in the IOC. But like actually, that. hindi lahat ng bansa may representative or may miembro 
ng IOC. Yeah. So, baliktad, baliktad siya. Ah. But it doesn't matter. I don't think there's a distinction as far as my job description goes. Pero yung fact na Pilipina ako, nandun ako, hindi, hindi may alis sa akin yun, di ba? But it's been fun. It's been good. I've been very happy. And to be the first Asian woman, I mean, and that's something that I'm sure the other members of the international community also acknowledge. So parang, you will go down in history sa IOC as, oh, the first Asian woman. So lagi na lang si Mikey Kowanko Jaworski, the one from the Philippines. <laughs> Usually, diba, when people say that they work for a non-stock, non-profit, the impression is there's no compensation at all. I mean, yeah. so, but, so what, what is the, parang the give and take here? I mean, what kind of fulfillment do you get from the job? Of course, fulfillment naman really doesn't come just from compensation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't spend anything. All the expenses related to my work with the IOC is paid for. But I'm not employed by the IOC. And meron coming per DM. So, Every day of work, we get a certain amount, but it's not, I mean, parang ano lang siya, pamalit dun sa pwede mo sanang kitain kung hindi ka nagtatrabaho or gumagawa ng trabaho for the IOC like that. But only official meetings, mga ganon, no? That's the, I guess, corporate side of the quote-unquote compensation because we're all considered as volunteers. But, For me, to be able to work at this level of sport is really, really fulfilling because yung lahat ng naging karanasan ko sa sports na nakita ko na bilang bata na gustong sumubok ng sports tapos nagpursige, naging national athlete and everything that sports has contributed to my life and to my character, I get to play a different role na hindi na ako atleta, but I was able to move into sport administration. And then I'm able to contribute what I've experienced, where I've experienced it, and how to try to ensure that there are other people from the world and the Philippines that get to have a similar positive experience in sports. So wherever that takes you, ako ang pinaka-interesting part sa akin doon is yung natututunan mo sa sports, the values that you learn to live by. Parang nagiging normal part ng buhay mo. Yung isa buhay mo yung pagrerespeto, whether it's rules or to your competitor, yung hindi ka maging pikon, yung marunong kang makipagkaibigan kahit na alam mo in a few minutes maglalaban kayo or natalo ka sa kanya or tinalo mo siya. Yung mga bagay na yun, kaya yung mga bata na akala natin naglalaro lang sila, hindi lang laro yun kasi may natututunan din ng bata doon. And the, the higher the level you take it, the more expectations from you to behave like a sports person. Kaya di ba sinasabi, be a sport, di ba? Parang huwag kang pikon, be a sport. Yun, yun eh. Pag marami, lalo, ang nagiging ganong klaseng tao, dahil na-expose sila sa sports, may mga sports, syempre, may judge, di ba? Ah, mas maganda yung ginawa mong ganito. Ah, mas maganda yun. But a lot of other sports, wala namang judge eh. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, ah, hindi, kaya lang yan nanalo kasi paborito yan or something. So you have to find your own place in sports as a competitor. And for me, the fulfillment is being able to work to provide those opportunities to people. Parang a lot of athletes at that. That's really what they want, diba? Because syempre, as an athlete, you can only stay until a couple of years doing the sport. But eventually, you want to grow into a career that will help you still stay in sports, diba? Parang something still related mm-hmm. to sports. And, you know, recently, we had the opportunity to talk to EJ Obiana. And then he was saying that the Philippines right now is experiencing what he calls the golden age of sports. Do you agree with this? I mean, you were in Tokyo. You were the one who handed Heidi Lindias her gold medal. So would you agree that parang this is the, the, the peak of Philippine sports? No, no, not at all because we can we can be doing better. And I think as a competitor, it always it feels that way. Definitely, as far as athletics goes, we have not had an athlete that has excelled as much as EJ has in, in these recent times and, you know, and Heidelin. But, you know, coming from my position, we are competitors. We love medals. We love to win. <laughs> But for me, it's like we can win more. And if we don't win more, we have to be sure that sports is producing people who are better off because they were in sports. 
than if they were not in sports. So parang masasabi natin na, o oh, sige, gusto natin marami tayong medalya. Pero sa totoo lang, let's say na lang the Olympic Games. Ano ang populasyon ng buong mundo? Di ba? Billion-billion tayo. The Olympic Games, we are limited by cost, by practicality, to having 10,500 athletes in a Summer Olympic Games. Maybe about 3,000 athletes in a Winter Games. Out of all of those athletes, we have, sabihin mo na, 350 events where people can win medals. So out of the entire population of the world, every four years of a Summer Olympic Games, only 350 people can be a gold medalist or teams or silver or bronze. But does that mean na yung effort na nilagay mo sa sports, whether naging national athlete ka or recreational athlete ka, na hindi ka nagkakasakit dahil physically fit ka, na hindi ka nakakabigat sa pamilya mo, dahil sakitin ka or nalulung ka sa masamang bisyo. Kasi kung hindi ka nag-sport, siguro marami kang time magbulakbol. Or siguro hindi ka naging as physically fit as you could have been. So there are social benefits to sports. And it doesn't have to be all about just the medals. For me, but those are intangibles, di ba? Hindi nabibilang yon Pero medalya nabibilang. Ang medalya nagbibigay ng honor, nagbibigay ng inspirasyon. We become united when we have, you know, athletes who perform well. So, at the top level and the bottom level of sports, it's a service. So, for me, that's why I love doing it because I'm providing a service in an area that I'm familiar with, that I know. Kasi, yan ang kinalakihan ko, di ba? For me, a golden age, I believe in the Filipino, that we can do more. But we also have to change our attitude that it's not just about the medals. It's about how we work. It's about how we get there. And there are a lot of people who are putting in a lot of money in sports now that was not being put into sports before. And the challenges remain. So it's also working smart na kailangan natin gawin to be more competitive. And There are many, many people in the Philippines who are working very hard to also serve in the area of sports. And for me, sana mahanap din nila in their particular sports kung ano yung magiging strategy. Para sports can serve more people and at the same time, we can also make the Filipino people proud by our international success. That's nice, no? What you said, na yung sports, it's really not just about the medals because there's so many intangibles involved. Yeah, the formation, di ba? I think yun yung primary dun sa mga athletes, yung formation, values formation, the discipline. Pero hindi mo naman iniisip yun eh when Uh-oh. you're an athlete. <laughs> you don't think of those things, you know? I mean, there are challenges din kasi maraming mga atleta, hindi naman nila naisip, anong gagawin ko pag hindi na ako atleta? And a lot of, you know, financial, psychological issues come out of that. Kasi like for us in the IOC, pinipilit namin yung mga athletes na we know that you're competitive athletes and we know the kind of focus you need to be successful. But think of what's after. So we have programs about, you know, trying to help athletes, you know, encouraging them stay in school if you can, finish your education. If you're not able to, there are opportunities being given para may capacity building then for skills. Yung mga bagay na ganun, or matulungan ang mga atleta na makahanap ng trabaho after their athletic life. So, you know, they're trying to serve also the athletes as human beings, as individuals. Kasi... Mm-hmm. Minsan may mga champion na yung parang may longevity sila, matagal sila doon. Pero may mga iba din, hindi naman eh. So when we talk about sports and encourage people to get into sports, we also have to think of them when they're finished with sports. That's part of the work that the IOC does also. Mikey, how did you personally get into the whole IOC scene? I mean, of course, you were an athlete, but because para I'm thinking after listening to you, para siguro ang dami nang gusto maging part ng IOC. <laughs> you know, that's the funny part eh. Ako sinasabi ko talaga, God has a sense of humor. Kasi ang dami-dami mga nangyari sa buhay ko na hindi ko pinlano. Tapos yung mga iba, galing pa sa hiccups, yung parang, 
naging artista ako dahil nahulog ako sa kabayo, hindi ako makasakay for more than one year, kaya nagkaroon ako ng time, natanggapin yung mga ibang projects, you know, things like that. As far as the IOC is concerned, never kung inambisyon. I never aspired for it. It wasn't even really important for me, I guess, because I was doing more work in grassroots sports and it was really occupying a lot of time. But when Mr. Francisco Alizalde, who used to be the representative of the IOC to the Philippines, when he turned 80, kasi nung time na yon yun yung mandatory retirement age, wala nang IOC member from the Philippines. And actually, Mr. Elizalde was an extremely respected member of the IOC. He was even head of the Ethics Commission at some point. And that's huge. That's really something that's a big deal for the IOC. So I guess the benefit for me there was the respect that the IOC as an organization had for him. Put the Philippines somehow in the radar, on the radar of the IOC. So I was encouraged to apply to become a member. And I said, huh? Ayoko nga maging IOC member kasi yung image ko ng IOC noon puro matatandang lalaki na naka-Amerikana. <laughs> sabi ko, anong gagawin ko doon, di ba? <laughs> Tapos sabi ko, it entails a lot of travel talaga. Tapos sabi ko, hindi ko yata pwedeng iwan palagi yung pamilya ko, things like that. So I spoke to Dodot. And of course, it's something that he understands. So sabi nga, well, you know what? Why don't you, as many things you say you do in your life, surrender it to God's will? You're an athlete. Sanay ka namang matalo, di ba? Di ba sanay ka namang sa kabayo? <laughs> Sabi niya, so what difference will it make if you apply and they say no? If you're not accepted, hindi mo naman inambisyon, di ba? Ganon. Sabi niya, so apply. And if they say yes, edi mabuti kung no, edi hindi. Parang ganun lang kasimple. Ganun lang kasimple yung naging pag-iisip ko ng time na yon. But it involved, of course, there was an application process which culminated in a meeting with the IOC president at that time. Pero hindi ka naman aabot sa point na interview with the IOC president kung hindi ka naman seriously na consider. One step, then the other came and the other came. And I said, okay, it looks like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an IOC member. Wow. So yeah, in, in uh, 2013, I was invited to the IOC session to be elected. And then I was elected eventually. Wow, and it's um, going on 10 years already. Yeah. Bilis, ano? It doesn't really feel like it. Yeah. Uh-oh. When you're at the Olympics, do you get an opportunity pa to watch certain games or matches that yeah. you, you really want to watch just because you want to watch? Oh, na yes. Hindi ka Yes, yes. Well, we have the freedom to choose kasi syempre a lot of the IOC members, they also have athletes competing. It's part of our job to watch everything. To watch as many as we can. Saya naman. <laughs> it's part of our job. I know, right? Parang it's really a dream job actually if you love sports, di ba? So I get to watch. I get to watch. Pero kinocontrol ko talaga kasi syempre they're competing. So especially, let's say, pag nanunod kami ng US basketball. Wow. Diba? Yung, oh, diba? It's super <laughs> exciting. But of course, I really try to watch all the Filipino athletes. Priority ko talaga yon. So if there are some things that are outside of my control, certain meeting dates, mga ganon. So I get to miss a lot of our Filipino athletes also. Pero... It's common among all of us. Basta, I have an athlete here, yun ang nakaset na. Then the others are a bit more flexible. Parang optional na. But does that mean, because you're also in the IOC, pag nag, may mga nagbibid to be the host of the Olympics, you're part of the committee that sits yes. and watches the bids? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. so cool. Although it's different now. Kasi dati, ang nangyayari, talagang may mga countries na lalapit sa IOC, tapos... Malaki yung gastos ng pagbid because there used to be an evaluation commission that would visit the bidding cities. And I was fortunate enough to be on the last evaluation commission. So I was able to visit Paris, Los Angeles, when they were both bidding for supposedly the 2024 games. And it's, um, alam mo yung, yung work hindi na work. Kasi may enjoy mo siya. And it's not all about being able to travel, being able to see sites. We also have very highly technical discussions about sports, about venues, about 
financial matter. So, I mean, it, it all comes into play because every organization also needs to be able to, to support itself and to support its projects and advocacy. So, kasama lahat nun sa mga ginagawa namin. So, and then eventually, of course, the IOC as a whole body votes on who will be the next host. But we do it differently now. There's more engagement from the start pa lang. So yung IOC, nag assist na ngayon dun sa mga gustong mag-host. Ah. Instead na sasabihin nyo, sige, bahala kayo, tas kayong lahat magpakitang gilas kayo. Because it's not necessarily in line with what the IOC is trying to do also when it comes to sustainability, optimization of funding, mm-hmm. and you know, things like that. And it's not even just a matter na may mag-host ng Olympics. For the IOC, it's important na may lasting effects that the Olympic Games will leave a legacy mm-hmm. in every host city or country. Kasi hindi naman yung parang bisita ka tapos, o oh, sige, salamat, ang, ang ganda, ang ganda ng alis lugar niyo. Bye-bye, <laughs> alis na kami, di ba? Salamat, di ba? It's not like that. So Ooh. we also want them to be able to say, these are the benefits we got because we hosted the Olympics. Do you think yung Pilipinas, I mean, eventually, will reach that point na we'll be able to host the Olympics? <laughs> I don't really see it happening very <laughs> soon. But as a patriot, I'll never stop dreaming that it could happen one day. But as a as an IOC member, the demands are really insane. Really high. Yeah. Oo. Kasi it, laki ng gastos, really... di ba? Yeah, malaki yung gastos niya. There's no way naman that anyone can say, ah, hindi, hindi malaki yung gastos. Malaki naman talaga. I think that there's a reason that that it's also more developed countries that host. But I also mentioned earlier, we have the Youth Olympic Games and the scale of the Youth Olympics is much smaller. I think that the Philippines would be capable of hosting something like that. Wow. But it also goes through a bidding process. Maybe that's something we can look forward to. Baby steps, diba? Right? <laughs> yeah, baby steps. Wow, baby that steps. Would be, I think that would be one of the most exciting things for me personally. Emotionally, emotionally. <laughs> yung makapag-host ang Pilipinas ng something for the Olympic movement. It was actually so interesting also to find out about your work sa IOC. Kasi diba parang it's always in the news na parang Mikey Kowanko Jaworski bilang kinatawa ng IOC. But then parang hindi rin namin talaga naiintindihan kung ano bang ibig sabihin nun and what it is that you actually do. And parang it's such a fun job. Yes, Now that I is. know what you do, <laughs> parang ang saya-saya ng trabaho. It's not usual also that I get to talk about the IOC and my work with the IOC And why it's important to me. This is one of the rare the, the rare occasions that I'm able to talk about that. So thank you, thank you. Kasi even for myself, parang, di ba pag narinig mo yung sarili mo na sabihin yun, parang, oh nga. <laughs> <laughs> Nandun yung realization. <laughs> How did you get naman into the sport? How old were you when you first rode a horse? And decided, I, I want to do this. Oh, you know, the first time I rode a horse, maybe it was, I don't know, two. I only remember kasi my pictures yung mommy ko. But my dad was a racehorse trainer. So I was oh. exposed to horses. Not the most exciting thing for me kasi usually pag uuwi kami ng tarlac, nadaan muna kami ng quadra. Tapos yung training-training niya. Maliliit pa kami noon ng young, si, younger sisters ko, Maya Maya and China. That's kind of boring for us. And I used to think, <laughs> it would be so much less boring if I could ride them instead of just watch, watch. them. Parang gano'n na And when I was eight years old, my cousins, my older cousins, kasi 34 kaming magpipinsan eh. Number wow. 32 ako. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Chris is number 31. I'm number 32. Okay. And syempre, parang your older cousins, mga kuya, mga ate, ganon. Parang gusto ko, oh, gusto ko rin, ganon. So kinukulit ko yung parents ko. But they never agreed. Ano na ako, 10 years old na when they finally agreed. And nagsawa na yung mga pinsan ko. So siguro feeling ko, pinaghirapan ko rin kulitin yung mga magulang ko para pumayag sila, paninindigan ko na lang. And that's really how it started. Wow. That's really how so it started. So you first started riding in Tarlac? No, of course my cousins had horses. And for me, when I say started riding, I mean it in a formal way. Like, ah, okay. With syempre, lessons. Hindi yung sakay-sakay lang. Yeah, yung lessons. Kasi really, that's what I wanted eh. So parang sa akin, no, sige, sakay ako ng kabayo. Masaya siya. Pero no, there has to be 
something more than this. That's always how I felt. And true enough, and ang ginagawa ko pa noon, ano ba ka noon, mga grade four or five, I guess, may riding school called De Rosa. And they used to do it parang may classroom, tapos may, may lesson sa classroom, and then may actual riding. So every day, may schedule. Yan, morning, afternoon, ang usual riding schedule twice a week. Pero pumupunta ako araw-araw. Tapos wow. umuupo ako doon, tapos every lesson, titignan ko kung may absent. Kung walang absent, pupuntahan ko yung instructor. Coach Bert, please, please, please. Anyway, <laughs> absent naman siya. Ganun. <laughs> so ikaw kukuha ng slot nila. Ako yung kukuha ng slot nila. So medyo napabilis yung, <laughs> yung pag-move up ko ng levels. Tapos I said, Dad, uh, kilala mo pala yung owner. Kasi hindi naman yung sinasabi sa akin nung una. Kilala mo pala yung owner ng riding school. Yeah, kilala ko siya kasi may racehorses din pala. Dad, can you say, can I ride on Sundays? <laughs> <laughs> kasi walang nag-ride normally walang on a Sunday. It's closed on ah, Sundays. Okay. Ewan ko, siguro naawa naman sila. Ewan ko, naawa, natuwa. I don't know. <laughs> Pero pumayag naman. So I guess, I guess it was like, I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. Merong feeling of fulfillment na may ginagawa ka, na, oh, you're getting better, yung ganon. I, oh. I enjoyed it. I don't know why. Were your parents hesitant in the beginning? Kasi di ba medyo dangerous sport? Mm. It's just that people think it's as simple as riding yeah. a horse, but it, it's actually quite dangerous. That's why it took two years na makonvince ko sila. Ah, okay. And in those two years, my dad tried to get me to play golf. He tried to get me to play bowling. And actually, yung sa bowling, interesting siya kasi my dad was a coach also. Yung sister ah, ko, talaga? my ate, my ate Lia, was on the national team for bowling. Ganito yung mga bowling days namin. I was eight, nine, ganon. Dalawa yung bola ko. Meron pang right hand, meron for left hand. Which was quite unusual, apparently. Parang for me, hindi ko naman naisip. So, sasabihin ng dad ko, O sige, one hour tayo practice with the right hand. So, practice. Okay, tapos na. One hour practice tayo with the left hand. Tapos napapansin ko, may mga nanunood. Kasi ang liit-liit ko pa nun. Tapos they watch me right hand. Parang laruan ako. Ay, kaya niya o. Oh, right hand and left hand. Ganon. Tapos sasabihin ko, Dad, ayoko. Kasi hindi ko naman talaga gusto mag-bowling. I don't want to play bowling. I want to ride a horse. <laughs> It's okay. I'll give you cheeseburger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeseburger lang pala ang panuhol. <laughs> so every, ano, siguro twice or three times a week, my cheeseburger. Masaya na ako nun. Ang Pero cute naman. Pero kailangan after, after, hindi pwedeng habang nagbabowling. Kasi syempre yung oh, grease. <laughs> magiging greasy na yung kamay. The ball will just slip. <laughs> so sabi mo, it was also by chance that you got into showbiz because you yes. fell off your horse and you had time. <laughs> yes. But before that, were you getting a lot of offers already to be in showbiz? Okay, yung timeline kasi niyan, I was 17 when the Swatch commercial came out. I just turned 17 kasi March, yun eh, end of February ko. And since that time, I was getting offers. But for me, I was a student and I think I was a senior high school. Tapos, athlete ako, national athlete na ako that time. Eh. So for me, it was like, well, unfortunately, I don't have time. And of course, alam ko na yung buhay showbiz kasi nakikita ko si Chris. Tapos sometimes she'll tell me to visit her, ganun. No? So nakikita ko rin. And I said, well, it's not possible for me to do that. So nung na-injure nga ako, it took longer for me to recuperate and get back into the sport. And I was very frustrated. Kasi since the age of 10, imagine I was riding almost every day. I was so serious. Parang feeling ko, I'm an athlete. Yung ganun, yung ganun, yung pakiramdam ko. Kahit na parang, hindi <laughs> na, parang, liit po pa. Hindi ka naman masyadong magaling pa. Well, ganun, diba? Feeling ko, I'm an athlete. I was very serious about it. I took myself eh, very seriously. Hindi <laughs> natawa. So, parang, para sa akin, ay, hindi ako pwede kasi busy ako. Parang ganun. So, when I was injured, yun na nga, na-frustrate ako. Tapos sabi ko, wait a minute. Sabi ko, Instead na ma-frustrate ako, ma-bore ako, ma-depress ako, this will keep me busy, sabi ko. And my mom was saying, you know, 
She said, every opportunity that comes your way, you should take it. For all you know, you will love it, she said. And if you hate it, then get out of it. It's that easy because you don't need it. You're not asking for it. You're a student. We're supporting you naman. May parang ganun, di ba? Eh, alam naman niya ever since grade school, high school, drama club naman ako. Yung ganun, di ba? Ah, okay. Drama club, that's medyo dramatic pa. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so sabi ko, okay. And I, uh, uh, well, I really, really enjoyed it. I really loved it. I loved the work. I loved the people that I worked with. Para sa akin, it was really such a blessing. And not only that, It helped me support myself in sports. I was fourth year college when I got into show. When, well, parang second year college yung na-injure ako. Third year, dapat mag-shoot na kami. Hindi matuloy-tuloy. Then I started riding again. Tapos tsaka lang kami nag-start mag-shoot. There was a time na talagang ang hirap kasi I was doing my thesis. But I was also training for the Asian Games. I was also shooting forever. My first movie. Oh. Ang naging schedule ko was puro, siguro may two months, one or two months yun na puro night effect kami. So 6pm to mga 5am or basta hindi pa sumisipat yung araw, nagsushoot kami. Tapos diretso ako sa training. Wow! Uwi lang ako para maligo, ganun. Tapos diretso ako sa training. Then from training, diretso ako sa school. Wow. And I had class in the morning, tapos nagda-data gathering ako for my thesis from 2.30 to 4.30. And Grabe. then call time ko, 5.30, ganon. Yeah, so, you know, there was a period na ganon. But of course, I was a senior and I graduated soon after that. But for me, it was it was something that I enjoyed kahit ganon. Kahit ganon, in-enjoy ko siya. What a schedule, no? Yeah, Napaka-pack yeah. Napaka-packed ng schedule. But di ba you had, you had a show on GMA yes. that was Mikey? Yes, was that the yeah. show on Jamie? I remember that, mm-hmm. di ba? Parang signature mo yun, tapos may sketch ng horse. Horse, yeah. <laughs> And it's funny yun kasi, ano lang yun, that started as a joke. That started as a joke with the staff of Swatch and GiftGate. Kasi I had a long break. So pumunta ako sa office ng GiftGate. I was sitting down and I was writing. Tapos yung isang kaibigan ko na in charge brand manager ng Swatch, wala siya. So I left her a note. Tapos yun yung nilagay ko na signature. Wala lang. I don't know even how it happened. It just did. And then I left it on her desk. And next thing I knew, did you did you do this? Did you do this? They were asking me. I said, yeah. Sino pang, sino pang mag-iiwan ng notes? Said, Parang ganun ka. Ano, no? Tapos yun na. Yun na yun. And it wow. stopped. So even up to now, people, just yesterday, someone came to me and said, can I have your autograph? And I said, talaga? Sabi ko, <laughs> Uso pa ba yun ngayon? Sanya, hindi kasi gusto ko sana yung my horse. <laughs> Yesterday lang. <laughs> Galing ah. Diba? So I was actually gonna ask you if you really still sign that way. Kung wari may note ka or kung wari yes. yeah. post it para sa mga anak mo. <laughs> Ganon well, yung signature. no. Not my kids. <laughs> I don't even, <laughs> I don't leave many post-its. <laughs> <laughs> But you still sometimes sign that way. Every time. I sign oh, wow. na first name ko lang. Wow. I, I sign that way. It's stock eh. Nag-stick siya talaga. So, it became a habit that every time I sign, yung first name lang ha. Yung first name oh my lang. gosh. Okay. Pag nakita kita in person, I will ask for your autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Gusto ko yung Mikey na my horse. <laughs> You were doing showbiz at this time, di ba? And, yeah. And dami mong love team. I mean, we all know who your love team partners were, di ba? I mean, <laughs> is it okay to mention? <laughs> Hi, I'm Howie Severino. My colleagues and I developed this idea of creating a podcast as a safe space for sharing insights with leaders and interesting people across diverse backgrounds. I've been a journalist for 33 years as a newspaper reporter, news anchor, online editor, and documentary maker. But podcasting is fresh territory for me. Check out the Howie Severino Podcast, an original for GMA News and Public Affairs. New episodes will stream every Thursday. Listen for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. Empower yourselves and be safe. You were doing showbiz at this time, di ba? And, yeah. And dami mong love team. I mean, we all know who your love team partners were, di ba? I mean, 
<laughs> is it okay to mention? <laughs> yeah. Ay, alam Kasi naman natin lahat. We actually ended up doing nine movies. Tapos sa nine na yon, dalawang movie doon. Magkasama kami ni Aga. Dalawang movie doon. Cesar. Tapos, Dalawang did... movie lang ba with Aga? Mm-hmm. Yeah, ah, two lang. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, w- at that time, I mean, did you have any of your l- love team partner? Yeah, no, I think, I think it was, I think, ano, masyado akong hindi. Kasi parang, <laughs> I actually became friends. Yung talagang naging friends kami. Well, Aga was my friend naman even before I got into showbiz. And then I did some movies. Parang for me, that was, I was so new. I was getting into it pa lang. But I was also still a competitive athlete. Yung ganon. Okay, kasi before I got into the movies, I was also a big movie fan. I'm like super, super, super Sharon yan, okay? <laughs> so, as in lahat ng mga movies niya, pinapanood namin ng ate ko. Kahit umupo kami sa stairs, sa movie house. It's, it's, Ay, oo, it's, dati kasi yung ganon, hindi ba ba dati numbered. Bilang, di ba? Oh my gosh, kaligayahan namin yun ng ate ko. Manood ng Sharon, manood ng basketball, sa ultra, ganon. So for me, before anything else, I was a fan. So syempre, syempre nababasa ko naman yung mga chisme, sinong ganito, sinong nangiligaw, yung ganyan-ganyan. And I've always been like parang, grabe naman to, nangiligaw pa lang talagang pinag-uusapan na ang daming nakikialam. Paano magiging sila? Kung pakikialaman nyo, <laughs> di ba? Hayaan nyo muna. Hayaan nyo ito pag-develop para malaman nila. Isa yung compassion. <laughs> Oo, oh, may, may talagang may feelings, di ba? Parang kulit nyo naman. Hayaan nyo magligawan, di ba? Siyempre, di ba? Parang Uh-oh. mauudlot lalo yan. Sige, type nyo sila pero makulit kayo, mauudlot yan. Sige. <laughs> Ganon, di ba? So for me, before before getting into the movies, I was a movie fan. Alam ko na rin yung mga ganon, hoy, huwag niyo akong itchichismis, hindi ko siya type. May mga ganon ako. And I was very... <laughs> okay. Kasundo ko yung mga staff, yung mga crew. I had a very, like, candid relationship with all of them. Even to the point na, ano? Sino? Ano ba? Sabihin niyo nga lang, trabaho tayo. Trabaho tayo dito, ha? Ganon, ganon kami. Tapos meron kaming policy on the set of Mikey na we got to a certain point na sobrang gel na kami ng technical. Tapos it was a very ex- interesting show kasi yung Mikey, uh, madalas nag-iiba yung director. So lahat ng mga bagong director, yun yung nagiging first directorial experience nila. Viva spoke to me and said, are you okay with this? Yes, I'm very okay with this because you know at some point someone was patient with me when I was new and I'm willing to do that. Pero kung pwede na lang, wag niyo na lang palitan yung assistant director tsaka yung continuity, sabi ko. Kasi yun yung mga talagang Maging kaibigan. Sa akin, diba? oh. Tsaka of course, kaibigan ko sila. So I said, if you just leave those two key people the same, I said, then at least yung adjustment ko is actually minimal. Well, mm-hmm. syempre, I'm an athlete. I'm a person who's coached. I'm a person who's used to taking instruction. Mm-hmm. I'm a person who, a new coach will always teach you a new technique. So, dinala ko yung training ko na yon and attitude ko na yon sa trabaho ko bilang isang actress. And for me, parang, okay, I'm open. Okay, I'll do what you want. Ganon, no? Anyway, they never made me do anything that made me feel that I was compromising my values or my personality. Ganon, no? Nagkaroon kami ng policy na kailangan yung isang sequence, mga 15 to 20 minutes lang. Uh-huh. I promise that I will come to the set prepared and I will dress up as fast as I can because out of mga 30 sequences, 28 kasama ako eh. I promise that I will do everything that I can para kahit late dinner na makakasama natin yung mga pamilya natin mag-dinner. Oh, so everybody nice. wanted it. Everybody Uh-oh. wanted that, di ba? So for me, okay, cut. Next, next sequence. Paalis pa lang. Nagbibis na ako. Eh, para mabilis. Sila talaga. Oh, sige, sige. Lipat ang ilaw. Lipat. It was really teamwork. I really was so proud to be part of, of that team. And hindi naman mukhang rushed yung yung output namin. Oh, hindi yung naman output. siya mukhang minadali. Hindi naman siya yung parang ganun. No? We enjoyed, I mean, I I hope that they enjoyed the experience of working on that show as much as I did. Kasi for uh-huh. me, 
it was really something in my life. Like, really a big, big thing for me in my life. Akala ko sasabihin mo yung policy niyo on set was bawal ang manliligaw sa set. <laughs> <laughs> hindi, hindi. Kasi yung mga guests ko, yung mga co-stars ko, binibisita sila ng mga ah. nililigman. Or yung mga Uh-oh. boyfriends or girlfriends or girlfriend. nila. And for me, I was always like, yes, come, come. Pero pag take, take, di ba? Take na, oo. Yeah. Basta business is business. Work is work. Yeah, and uh, well, I never had to really say to someone, uh, excuse me, trabaho kami ah. Uh-uh. <laughs> I never naman had to do that. But, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but among your mga love team, was, did you ever have a showbiz suitor na parang you had to turn away and say, eh, yoko, yoko talaga. <laughs> Yung wag mo akong i-chismis dyan, di ko type. <laughs> Without Ayoko naming names. Ayoko niya itong ikwento para <laughs> ang tagal na nun eh. <laughs> Meron, may situation na ganon. Well, I don't know, matagal na. Hopefully, nakalimutan na nila yon. But there were two actors na basa ko na nag-aaway daw sila because both of them daw may gusto <laughs> sa akin. And I was like, really? You know, parang nung time na yun, ako naman, I was laughing about it. Pero kasi niloloko ko nung mga staff. Eh, uy, uy, niligaw pala sa'yo. Alam mo ba, uh, baka naman nili- marami na niligaw sa'yo, hindi mo pa alam kasi puro kabayo lang ang hinatupag mo. Yung okay. ginagano nila ako. So actually, I was just laughing about it. But one day, I was dubbing. I was dubbing for a film. Tapos dumating, may yung isa, kasi may, siguro may project din sila doon. So the usual na, so mamaya-mamaya, nagtatrabaho ako. <laughs> Ang sungit, no? <laughs> mamaya, tapos dumating yung isa, ha? Kasi nalaman nga, nandun ako. Eh, may work then nearby. Wala pang cellphone noon. Wala pang uh-huh. beeper. Well, I didn't have a beeper. Kasi ayoko yung, ayoko nga yung... Yung nababak- contact ka, <laughs> oo. ba diba? So, I was like, okay. Tapos after, may pumasok. Tapos, nag-aaway. Nag-aaway daw sa labas. Uh-huh. I called the director of the film that I was dubbing for. Direct, ganyan-ganyan. So, hindi ako nagtatrabaho ngayon eh. Mukhang nakainom. <laughs> so, I was like, si Direct. Oh, no one's gonna help me kasi hindi wala naman Uh-oh. siya work, di ba? So, nung narinig ko sa voice, oh my gosh, ano mo ba sa ko? Alam nyo, storebook kayo. As in, ganun. Kasi nga, I'm an athlete, right? Sanay na ako na, ako sanay ako na ginaganan ako eh, di ba? Alam mo, ayusin mo yung ginagawa mo. I'm used to that. Kasi it's business. Alam nyo, nagtatrabaho ko. Kung nandito kayo, dahil gusto nyo, na pasayahin ako. Kasi interesado kayo. Ako na mismo nagsasabi sa inyo, hindi ako natutuwa. <laughs> I love this. As in, ganun. Grabe, and hindi ko like, ma-imagine. <laughs> and I was like, but I was so sweet naman. I said it naman so nice. <laughs> oh, I can imagine you. Habang sinasabi mo, like, kita pa rin yung dimples mo. <laughs> uh, I was like, kasi hindi naman ako natutuwa. Sabi ko, <laughs> kung gusto nyo mag-away, okay lang. Pero, siguro useless na pag-awayan nyo ako. Kasi, hindi naman ako pipili ng kahit isa sa inyo. <laughs> Kasi na yung literally <laughs> diretso, said that. Diretso, Okay. Yeah. As like, no offense, but they are right. Like, so, as no no offense, as but... If, as if naman walang offense talaga. As, as if, if hindi naman walang offense. offense. Kasi, nistorbo niyo ako eh. If you wanna show interest, first you show respect. I'm working. Trabaho niyo rin to, di ba? Actually, yun yung nasa ulo ko na gusto kong sabihin. Ganito rin trabaho niyo, di ba? Sabi ko, ba't Uh-oh. gusto niyo gagawin sa inyo yun? Eh, parang sila, parang yung face nila. Parang yes, kasi syempre nakakakilig if someone will do this for us. Yung ganun pa yung, <laughs> very, I said, yung iba, iba siguro ako mag uh, Well, hindi ako kinikilig at hindi ako natutuwa. At <laughs> nag-aksaya kayo ng oras ko. Sabi ko, alam niyo naman, nagtitraining ako. Ano to? Five minutes na ako dito, nakikipag-usap sa inyo. That's five minutes more of sleep that I could have gotten before wow. I train. After nun, hindi na sila nagtangka siguro ulit, no? Never, never, nothing. Thank you, <laughs> Pero Lord. Ito, this was pre-Dodot, as oh, in way yeah. before. Oh, yes, yes, oh, okay. yes. Okay, okay. so alam na niya. So, si Dodot, si Vice Mayor Dodot, he knew what to do. Na parang well, hindi niya gagawin yun. No, no. Kasi syempre, hindi ko naman nakwento sa kanya yun eh. Alam mo, this is the first time na kinwento ka yan in public, honestly. <laughs> and for me, so, it's so funny na... Uh, the funny thing is, natatawa ako ngayon kasi hindi ko naman, parang para sa akin, huwag na lang tayo magpa, magpaikot-ikot. 
hindi ko naman sinabi in a bastos way. Kahit na alam ko na medyo siguro baka nabastosan din sila. Kaya lang para sa akin, kanina pa kayo ng mood. Pumapasok yung assistant nila. Um, pwede, ready ka na ba? Ready saan? Hindi ko sa inyo pumunta kayo dito, di ba? I don't know why. Maybe I was like 21 or something. Pero parang for me, again, I was very serious about my work. I was very serious. Trabaho to. Leave me alone. Parang gano'n, di ba? <laughs> Kung ayaw niyong magtrabaho same way that I work, okay lang. But don't bother me when I'm Uh-oh. working. Parang gano'n, gano'n. Kaya mas may inis ako the more na, hindi kasi gusto lang kayong makita. Alam nyo naman. Ay, ay, ay di naman yung gagana sa lahat annoying. ng babae. <laughs> eh, diba? Eh, si Dodot, actually, well, he's a very professional person. He's also an athlete. So, he knows. He had his own regimen. He had his own, parang, way of doing his thing as, as a professional athlete. So, siguro, in that sense, magkasundo kami. Pero many, many, many years later na, like, I don't know. I don't know how. But I don't know how many years ago that was. <laughs> May kausap ako. So, siguro similar yung tono ko sa tono ko that night. Sabi niya, grabe, ba't ka ganyan? Sabi ko, what do you mean? Sabi, sabi niya, parang kang principal. <laughs> like, I've never been called a principal. And my husband's calling me a principal. Sabi ko sa kanya. Tapos sabi niya, what principal? And then yung mga kids. Tapos nakatingin lang sila para I was like, I'm not gonna get into a fight that that I can't win. Diba? I was like, ah, never mind, never mind. Okay, Kasi sige. yung kids parang agree sa daddy nila. <laughs> <laughs> agree sila eh. Parang I was like, uh, when I saw their faces, hindi na lang ako mag-argue. Parang, you know, <laughs> principal, grabe ka naman, hindi naman. Tapos parang natawa-tawa na lang siya. So after that, I had to make a choice. <laughs> I had to make a choice kasi hindi naman ako ganun nun. Hindi naman, hindi talaga ako ganun nun. I said to to my kids, you know, I became like this. I became like this when I became a mother because I ha- I realized na I had to learn to fight. O sige, wag na lang fight. I had to learn to assert myself because if I don't assert myself, the people around me that I'm responsible for, baka sila yung malagay sa... Alanganin. Kasi kung ako lang, I am a very tolerant person. Uh-oh. Pero if there's a chance that someone that I love, I care for, I'm res- especially yung I'm responsible for, yung sila, yung malalagay sa alanganin, hindi na ako papayag, di ba? Next, so, go! So, do, doon do, do, nag, do, nag-start yun, Uh-oh. yung, yung pagka principal <laughs> <laughs> Go, Mikey and all the mommies. One point for Mikey and all the mommies. <laughs> Motherhood and principal yeah. came together. <laughs> si uh, Vice Mayor Dodot, paano ba kayo nagkakilala? And how did you guys get together? Is it because you were both athletes? You were in the same circle? Well, yes, exactly. Kasi yung teammate ko was dating his teammate, Vince. He's on. And ang kulit nilang dalawa... Parang at that stage, so I was 23, that was 97. Ang kukulit nila, parang, sige na, sige na, go out with this guy. You know, you're gonna like him. He's really smart. He's valedictorian ng high school. Wow. He's a counselor. Ganon, talagang sobrang build up. <laughs> and I guess at that stage, medyo, I mean, it was it was not really a time in my life that I was looking to meet anyone. Really, really not talaga. And I was uh, at this stage na, okay, I'm gonna focus on trying to qualify for the Olympics. I'm gonna focus on my career because I wanted to make some changes in my career. I wanted to have a bit more of depth, I think, in the in the content that I was doing, you know, things like that. So, yun yung immediate plan ko. So, ang kulet, di ba? So, I had just <laughs> returned from a training stint. The way kasi we used to do it before was, di ba yung show ko? Pag may competition ako, may biyahe ako, mag-iipon kami ng episodes. And then I leave for a month or, you know, whatever amount of time. Tapos, babalik ako. Usually, I'll shoot a movie and then tape, you know, no? So, yun yung kaka-uwi ko lang. Tapos, sige na, sige na. And I said, 
ang kukulit nyo. The whole time that I was away competing, every day, sige na, when you come back, pag-uwi mo, parang gano'n. No? Sino yung makulit? Yung teammates mo or si Vince Hizon? <laughs> yung teammate ko, kasi I didn't know Vince. Hindi ah, okay, kami okay. nag-meet nun eh. Tapos, she was saying, para you can meet Vince. She, I won't introduce you to Vince. Hanggat Unless... yung, basta magdi-dinner na lang ta. Parang, and I thought to myself, you know what? I said, syempre, feeling mo, mature ka na, di ba? To feeling mo, 23. 20, yeah, I'm mature already, di ba? So I go, you know what? I'm a, I'm a mature woman. I don't need to feel as if there's an expectation from meeting someone. Kasi tama naman siya. Kakain din naman ako eh, di ba? Oo. Mag-dinner din naman ako eh. Di kumain na lang tayo magkasama. If at all, I'll meet another person. And it doesn't even matter if I like this person in any way at all or dislike this person. So that I had that attitude na walang pressure. It didn't matter. Yung gano'n, mm-hmm. no? So the whole time na kumakain kami, hindi namin alam nung friend ko kung ano yung kinakain nitong dalawang six-footer basketball <laughs> player. Tinapatan naman ng dami ng kain namin. <laughs> And the whole time... Everyone was talking, dal-dal ang dal-dal, yung gano'n, no? So it was actually a very casual, it turned out to be a very casual dinner. Siguro, um, nakatulong na lang din yung barkadahan kasi hindi sila nagda-date na sila lang. Every time ah, na... Ah, laging group date. Laging, well, sila lang yung mag-boyfriend dun sa grupo. Pero for uh-huh. them, it was like, you know what? Then why don't we all go together? Mas uh-huh. masaya naman pag sama-sama eh. Pag special occasion, that's the only time na... Guys, kami lang magde-date, parang gano'n. So, I guess, from that, naging kay- magkaibigan talaga kami ni Dot. And then after, hindi na siya yung parang magkikita na lang sa venue. Pumunta na siya sa point na, sinusundo niya na ako. Wow. So, yun na yung start. Yun na yung start. Uh, yun na yung sign na parang may something. Yun na yung sign na may something. <laughs> Kaya lang, medyo natakot lang ako. Kasi, nung time na yun, di nagde-drive siya. First time, ha? Tapos nung time na yun, very ano pa ako, marami na rin nagbago sa akin. Kasi dati, <laughs> tahimik lang ako, parang hindi ako nagreklamo or anything. Eh, sobrang traffic. Yung tipong traffic na, er, tapos titigil, ah, tapos okay. titigil, yung gano'n, yung Usan nakakagilo. Usan pagod, okay. Oo, hindi, pero yung pag-break, yung talagang break, yung gano'n. Ah, parang mapapagano'n ka talaga. Oo, okay. yung, yung sobrang city driving talaga. Tapos may, may tumatawid, may tumatawid. Tapos parang sabi ko, treno ba to? Kasi first time ko, <laughs> treno ba to? So, sabi ko na lang, may tumatawid. Tapos <laughs> biglang treno. <laughs> Tapos parang ako, this is a warning sign. <laughs> <laughs> Tapos, galaw ulit, di ba? Kasi syempre parang, ano ba yung ugali ng taong to, di ba? Tapos, go ulit kami. May sumingit. Yung talagang, well, bastos naman talaga yung pagkasingit niya. Di preno na naman, di ba? Tapos, <laughs> nag bad word siya. Tapos siguro napansin niya. <laughs> siguro napansin niya, medyo lumaki yung eyes ko kasi napaganon ako. Tapos <laughs> sabi niya sa akin, Ah, gusto mo ba? Best foot forward muna? Or pwedeng tutuhanan na lang? <laughs> Uy, okay yun ah. Parang okay. Diba? Pang movie yun. Gusto mo ba best foot forward o tutuhanan ay, na lang? Parang napagayon pa siya. Ay, gusto mo ba best foot forward muna? <laughs> Or pwede bang yung normal na lang? <laughs> so what was your reaction? Nag-isip pa ako talaga. Sige na nga. Normal na lang. Pero yung oh, oh. parang nag-iisip ko, magsisisi pa ako na sinabi ko yun. Yung, <laughs> normal na lang. Okay. <laughs> Kesa naman, oo oh, nga yung mag-aksaya ka pa ng panahon tapos makikita mo rin eventually yung oh, normal, oh, di ba? Diba? Parang, parang, parang nagpaloko. Parang sinabi ko, lukohin mo ako. Di ba? <laughs> <laughs> oo nga, pag sinabi mo, best foot forward. <laughs> good point, good point. So, what was it about um, Vice Mayor Dodo that made you realize that he was the one? Was it like one moment na para ay, no. he's the one? <laughs> Bilis na hindi. sagot. Nakakunod pa yung noo. <laughs> no, 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 it's just not. No naman, hindi. Kaya, hindi. Kaya siguro naging ganun yung expression ko. Kasi maraming mga, ma- there are a lot of, of women out there who look for that, mm-hmm. di ba? Who look for that big emotional moment na ganun. Pero I'll admit, 
even I was one of those na sabi ko before, oh yeah, maybe when you know, you know, diba? But it, it really was not, it was not like that at all. Kaya nga sabi ko, talagang siguro pinlano talaga ni Lord na maging group dates and gano'n yung nag-graduate siya into more and more. Because knowing me, even yung mga friends ko since grade school, high school, sila nagsasabi, ah, kung hindi naman ganyan nangyari, yung mga turn of events sa buhay mo, siguro your life will be very different now, parang ganon. And I think they're right. They know me naman, they know me well. Even the things that I will deny about myself, they're, they'll, <laughs> they'll call me out for it, di ba? But the dot, dot, I think it was more of getting to to know him. Buti na lang sinabi ko, sige, yung totoo na lang, oh, na lang best foot natural. forward. Kasi it was small things more than anything else. It was yung thoughtfulness niya, yung closeness niya sa mom niya, yung pag-alaga niya sa mga kapatid niya. It was more of details. Yung kahit na ito, napakaliit na bagay, pero for me... Yung siya yung nagbubukas ng gate ng bahay niya para ipark yung kotse niya. Siya yung nagsasara. Para sa akin, that's something. Then I saw that his dad, kasi hindi pa kami married noon, also, ganun yung ugali niya. No, Big J na siya noon. Nagbubukas ng gate si Jawo? Siya yung, siya yung nagbubukas ng wow. gate. Pag umuwi siya, siya nagpa-park, siya nagsasara. So for me, that was even something that spoke not just of Dodot, as a person, but the upbringing. Tapos, I got along right away with his family, with his parents. For me, it was a lot of things that came together talaga. Mm-hmm. For me, um, ultimately, yung pareho yung values namin, mm-hmm. yung pareho yung direction na gusto namin puntahan sa buhay namin. That was the most important part for me. Oh my gosh, you know, Mikey, parang feeling ko we can go on all day. Parang <laughs> feeling ko pwede tayo abuti hanggang dinner sa dami ng questions ko. <laughs> but I mean, Para ang dami ko pang gustong tanungin, but I know you're very busy and um, you have lots to do. But uh, I guess first, kakamustay lang naman namin. Um, we really do hope everyone's doing well. Everyone in the family, your parents, your in-laws, everyone's okay. Yes, thank um, you, thank you. Our, our, our regards also to them. How's your mom? You know, I interviewed your mom a long time ago, but she's so nice. Until now, sometimes she, she would still send messages and invitations to different events. Talaga? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, it was super nice. And I remember nung nag-interview kami sa house nyo, she, as in, talaga after the interview, showed us your pictures, all of you, talaga. you and your sisters when you were kids. And we're like, ang cute naman nila. <laughs> so she's so kalbo. proud. <laughs> Pero ano yun eh, parang may stages from when you were toddlers hanggang sa teenage yeah, years niyo. Yun, talagang oh, oh, kompleto. Yeah, kompleto she's yung pictures. She's doing good naman. Ay, nako, dalawang beses na siyang nag-COVID. But oh. but she's okay. She's still she's still studying. You know, she loves to study and learn and and yeah, she's still very active and she's still hyper. <laughs> <laughs> oh cute naman. And so your dad also very active paren. Well, you know, my dad um turned eighty eight a couple wow. of weeks ago. But he's well, well naman. Pero pag tinatanong ko siya, ano dad, kamusta? Ay, nako, I'm bored. <laughs> tapos, yeah. So, tapos, ay, nako, I'm bored. Ganun siya. Pero, madali lang pasayahin yung dad ko ngayon. Ube ice cream lang. <laughs> ay, cute naman. <laughs> and do you also get to visit your in-laws as well? Well, you know what? I I see all of them at least once a week. So All of them meaning your side of the family and yes, your in-laws. Yeah. Wow. Because I usually end lunch with my in-laws and then... And then with my side naman. That's really uh-huh. a family tradition. That it's something I really look forward to. So it's nice because I get to spend time with my sisters, my pamangkins. Uh-oh. And then of course, my family also is side me dot. And yeah, so so it's fun. It's always I around food. Naman. Yeah. <laughs> Oo nga. Eh, how Senator Jaworski, you see him papala once a week? Well, health-wise... He could be better. So we're still praying that he would really, we would really get to the bottom of all the issues that he's experiencing and that he would recover quickly. Kasi medyo matagal na rin that he has not been really 100%. So hopefully, so we'll ask everyone to pray, to pray also. Oh, I'm sure it helps when he has all of you guys there at Depends home with him. Depends pag masyado. Pag makulit, <laughs> pag makulit masyado, ayaw din <laughs> 
<laughs> may times big talaga kids na, na rin eh. <laughs> no, we still have ano, small pamangkins dun sa ah, Jersey Ah, okay. Side. Mga pamangkin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so ngayon, ano sila, Ninang, why didn't you bring cookie yung dog namin? Ay, nako. I don't want to bring cookie na kasi when you're noisy, dad gets mad at me. <laughs> 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 yun pala yung nagpapanoisy sa kanya. Oo, oh, yung aso na. <laughs> <laughs> ako pa rin, Ay, ako pa rin. <laughs> <laughs> Cute naman. And, and of course, your friends in showbiz, when was the last time you were with, um, di ba Dora Me is your group? Yes, when was yes. the last time you got to see Donna Cruz oh gosh, or Regine physically, Velasquez? Physically, physically, matagal na. Kasi of course, Donna is in, ano, Cebu. Donna's in, in Cebu. Well, I I saw Regine on her a few days before her birthday this year. Although April pa yun, ang bilis ng panahon dumaan. Uh-uh. Pero kailan ba yun? Nag-Zoom kami yung tatlo. Ah, oh, cute naman. <laughs> May Viber group kami. <laughs> Ay, ang cute. Siguro, nag-exchange pictures ba kayo sa Viber? Mga, oh, you remember this? <laughs> yung mga ganon. Pictures si Donna, niya pa before. Si Donna. Mas ah, ganon. Mas ganon okay. si Doyce. Yeah, siya yung siya yung mahilig na mag ano, mag mag-post ng pictures, mga ganoon. Cute na bad. Nako, Mikey, thank you so much for um spending time with us. Before we wrap up, uh, maybe there's something that uh you'd like to say first to your supporters, your fans who've been with you ever since before and also advice to, you know, all aspiring athletes in in the country. <laughs> Sa lahat ng mga fellow principal and then <laughs> Oh, well, you know. Actually, parang fellow principal din ako, I must confess. <laughs> let's, uh, let's glam the image of this. <laughs> well, first, of course, you know, I have a lot of, let's say, fans na naging friends ko din na hanggang ngayon, we're still in touch. They're also a lot older now. And I'm grateful that, that somehow we're in touch because of social media, di ba? It's given us an avenue for that. So, I guess now that I have the opportunity, dun sa, dun sa, sa, sa kanila, and they used to call themselves G7. <laughs> so powerful, <laughs> di ba? Yun, mga oh, mahal ko talaga yun. Mga mahal ko. Tsaka fellow Sharonians din sila. Fellow talaga. Fellow Sharonians din sila. <laughs> so many people who have supported, encouraged, I think more than anything, siguro the best word is encouraged. I'm so grateful and so blessed for the opportunities that I had and I think na Dora Me being one of my last films na people really remembered and for me talaga yung joy hindi lang siya happiness kung hindi joy of the experience of Dora Me not just the friendships with Donna and Regine but also the appreciation that we see from people yung nagtranscend na rin siya ng generations because even young people now alam nila yung Dora Me and i think it's really the message it's you know it's really the 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 message of upliftment kaya mo i can i can nga diba so for me to all those people that were touched by the film Dora me i don't even think they realize ni Regina ganun kasi ako hanggang ngayon sa social media hindi naman ako nag sa social media every day actually pero hindi dumadaan ang isang araw nang walang bumabanggit sa Doremi. And for me, parang, wow, you know, that's big. I just want to thank everyone for expressing sa amin na na-touch kayo ng isang ginawa namin many, many years ago. Not just, of course, for Doremi. There, there are other things also. But there, there's really an appreciation on my part that people remember. And siguro yung effort na hindi lang magpaka-enjoy nang pwede namang enjoyin bilang isang artista nung time na yon yung parang nag-effort ako syempre with the guidance of my parents my sisters my manager that it's a responsibility first and foremost hindi siya nandoon para enjoyin natin at hindi natin isipin kung ano yung magiging epekto ng sinasabi natin ng mga kilos natin sa mga nanonood at humahanga. I'm very grateful that there are people who express their appreciation for the, that effort na na, na ginawa ko rin with the help of of a lot of people including production and everyone that helped me to to stay that way. Other than that, I I'm just going to say thank you. A fun morning. 
<laughs> oh, nako, the thank yous on our part ang saya ng kwentuhan natin I really have so many more things that I can ask but I know that <laughs> you're very busy thank you for sharing this with us we really wish you all the best we look forward to all your other projects that you have in store especially your work with grassroots sports here in the country well I'm really praying and I think part of the path I think that God has put me on is to to be able to support Dodot in the work that he's doing. And and I'm very grateful to have a husband that acknowledges what I can do also to be able to help. So I'll really do my best also to be able to to serve the people of Pasig also by helping Dodot, the city council, and Mayor Vico with what they're doing. So makakaasa naman ng Pasigenyo na... Na it's a commitment, not just on the part of Dot, but for our family also to be able to do our share. Thank you so much, Miss Mikey Kowakajewski. Thank you. <laughs> this amazing surprise was planned by the team of Justin Kenneth Karandang and Aubrey de los Reyes, edited by Shirley Paghiligan with the wonderful people of GMA News and Public Affairs Digital. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Till the next surprise.